16, 15, 20 seconds left. Notre Dame will go for the two-point conversion. In college football, a change in conference can bring opportunity, but often at the cost of cherished rivalries. That is true today and was true 30 years ago, when the rupturing of tradition framed the memorable afternoon when Notre Dame Stadium turned into a snow globe. It's another below freezing afternoon in South Bend. Game time temperature 31 degrees. We're expecting an inch or two of snow accumulation possible before the afternoon is over. November 14th. 1992, the snowball in South Bend. The weather conditions are worsening as we speak. You mentioned it was in the 30s. Well, the wind chill probably brings it down more into the teens. On senior day, storylines set upon Notre Dame Stadium as quickly as the flurry. Now, Rick Meyer spent the day in the infirmary yesterday. He was unable to keep down any food, but the good news is it should be ready to go. But the question has to be his endurance. How long can he go? Can he make it four quarters here today? Jerome Bettis would play a starring role, even with an injured ankle. And the sellout crowd witnessed the closing of a chapter in one of the sport's most storied rivalries. The 1980s ended with Independence winning four straight national titles, Penn State in 1986, followed by Miami, Notre Dame, and Miami once again. The new decade brought change. Miami joined the Big East Conference in 1991, Florida State began in the ACC one year later. Then Penn State agreed to become the Big Ten's 11th team, starting in 1993. Suddenly, there was no longer time for two iconic uniforms to clash on the gridiron. This is the last game of the series between Penn State and Notre Dame. Penn State leading all time with a record of 8-7-1. So with a Notre Dame victory this afternoon, the Irish can actually send this series into the record books dead even. The wintry conditions helped create two turnovers by each team in the first half and even forced the cancellation of plans to film scenes for the movie Rudy at halftime. Kerry Collins led Penn State on a late touchdown drive that gave the Nittany Lions a 16-9 lead. Then came Myers' heroics. He found Bettis on fourth and goal with 20 seconds to play. Meyer throws it for Bettis, touchdown! The celebration had to be short. After all, Penn State still had the lead. And this was the era before overtime. Notre Dame had already tied one rival in South Bend earlier that season. On senior day, Lou Holtz had to be more decisive. So it was up to Meyer and an unlikely pass catcher to create a moment of improvised brilliance. Trips left, that is right. With that, the rivalry was left even. Eight wins for Penn State, eight for Notre Dame, with one tie in 1925. It was just a wonderful victory to be part of because it was a never say die attitude. The schools went more than a decade without meeting until each claimed a victory during a brief renewal in 2006 and 2007. Maybe they'll reconnect sometime in the future. Whenever they do, it'll be difficult to match what transpired in South Bend three decades ago a place and time that endures as a snowy page in the Notre Dame scrapbook.